Hi, let's have a look here today at the Disabilities Commissioner Graham Innes, I think his name is, at the uh, Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission. Graham Innes. Yes, and he was commenting online, I'll leave you the link online to it, about whether should parents be allowed to sterilise sterilize their disabled children. There's a video and article about it so on ABC TV Australia online, so you'll be able to find out more about it there. Now he seems to have a different point of view, a more humane point of view than does the Sex Discrimination Commissioner about bodily integrity. Like Elizabeth Broderick, for example, is she won't defend, she won't even speak one word in defence of a little boy's genital integrity and uh, she'll leave them screaming to their bloody fate. She will, when little boys are being uh, genitally mutilated. But of course she'll speak up for girls. But when we look at the psychology of Graham Innes, the HREOC Disability Commissioner, he seems to have far more insight into genital integrity matters than does Sex Discrimination Commissioner Elizabeth Broderick. Just looking at my notes here. And I said, as I just said, Broderick takes a sexist, misandrist and hypocritical approach when boys' genital integrity is at stake. Now, Graham Innes, he seems more perceptive, he seems to have a heart. Perhaps he suffered more, you know. Perhaps he suffered more than Broderick. That might be where his heart comes from. I'm not saying he uh, will speak up for male genital integrity, but he sounds like somebody who would know about suffering and torture. Apparently he's blind. I've learnt that he's blind. I've been looking at, looking at, studying up a little bit lately about him. Reporting on the involuntary sterilisation of people with disabilities. The transcript. Now we're just looking for the information here that we want. Disabilities Discrimination Commissioner Graham Innes strongly opposes any moves to relax the restrictions on the sterilisation of women and children with disabilities. There's been a lot of talk about women and children, especially from Elizabeth Broderick and women and children and disabilities. We don't hear about men and boys with disabilities. Uh, nevertheless, Graham Innes, Human Rights Disability Commissioner, this is what he said. It's a basic human right and it's a basic question of bodily integrity for women and girls with disability that these procedures shouldn't occur unless a person gives free and informed consent for it to occur. Let's just have a little look at that. Women and girls with disability. Now we know Broderick doesn't care about little boys' genital integrity. If she did, she would speak up a word. But um, here we have the Graham Innes, the Human Rights Disability Commissioner, suggesting that uh, uh, genital integrity is a right. I mean, uh, sterilising someone is taking away their genital integrity. Their genitals won't function as they were meant to. Uh, it occurs to me that plenty of boys, uh, disabled boys, disabled like retarded boys have not only got a genital, uh, not only got a neurological deficit because, uh, but they've been subject to uh, male genital mutilation as well as, an, as someone who's been a nurse I've seen retarded boys that have been genitally mutilated as well you know it, they were genitally mutilated at birth so not only have they got uh, their neurological deficit from their mental retardation but they've also got a neurological, an extra neurological deficit from their uh, uh, genital mutilation, which takes off seven, the, it takes off the most sensitive nervous tissue on the penis. They've lost that for life. But let's just see what Graham Innes said again. He said it's a basic human right. So genital integrity, according to him, well, I mean, there's not that much difference, is there? Well, we're talking about genital integrity. It's a basic human right, and it's a basic question of bodily integrity for women and girls with disability. That, how does he feel about boys, I wonder? That these procedures shouldn't occur unless a person gives free and informed consent for it to occur. Surely that should go for male genital mutilation as well as female genital mutilation. I was genitally mutilated without my informed consent. Graham Innes has told a Senate inquiry that allowing sterilisation of women and children without consent is a form of torture and should be criminalised. 
Well, we know that female genital mutilation is criminalised. We know that if you genitally mutilate a female, you will not only be sent to jail if you're found guilty, but you'll also be put on the sex offenders register for life. You will. I consider male genital mutilation a form of torture. I screamed, I'm sure, as a baby. I screamed and I had no anaesthetic. And not that anaesthetic makes it right. Graham Innes has told a Senate inquiry that allowing sterilisation of women and children without consent is a form of torture and should be criminalised. Well, if he has any heart, any compassion, uh, does he believe that male genital mutilation is a form of torture and should be criminalised? We know that Eliza Broderick is deaf to the screams of baby boys and so have been incidentally all the past sex discrimination commissioners and they're all female, weren't they, apart from ones that were um, temporary ones. Elizabeth Broderick, the sex com com uh, discrimination commissioner, is deaf to the screams of baby boys. She's blind to their bleeding. Uh, Graham Innes sounds as if he might have some understanding that it's torture. Graham Innes, the Commission's view is that we are not currently complying with human rights obligations. The Commission's submission to the inquiry indicates that in order to do that, we ought to ensure that coerced or forced sterilisation of women and girls or of women and children with disabilities should only occur with their free and informed consent and of children with disabilities and for that matter all children should not occur at all. Surely that applies to uh, male genital mutilation. Tell that to Broderick, for all children. Surely that includes boys and intersex too, intersex children and um, male children. The reporter asked, and if they can't give consent, Graham Innes said, then it shouldn't occur unless there's a life-threatening emergency. Yes, I mean, is male genital mutilation necessary? Indeed, male genital mutilation cause, actually causes life-threatening emergencies and it actually causes deaths, and it has caused deaths in Australia. Uh, male genital mutilation is most certainly not necessary and it can actually cause life-threatening situations. Statistically, boys die. Well, I say that male genital mutilation equals sexual violence equals torture. We protect a cat or a dog more. We protect a cat more in Australia. Uh, of its, uh, of its uh, foreskin than we do a baby boy. A, a cat in Australia has more automatic right to its own foreskin than does a baby boy in Australia. That's appalling. I'd like to know what Graham Innes thinks about all this. I'd like to hear Graham Innes speak up for male genital integrity since uh, no one else at the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission is going to. Uh, not, not a small number of boys in Australia have died or had complications from a male genital mutilation. I hope you do speak up, Graham. I really do hope that you speak up for the genital integrity of little boys. Somebody has to.